Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to another Warcraft replay here. Uh, going back to 2v2, uh, it's been a while, so I figured why not to cast more 2v2 games. Uh, yeah, not much has really happened. Um, it's been a good couple of weeks of not really worrying about uh, recording a video, but yeah, I just felt like doing it here. Um, we have a somewhat unique game. Everyone's playing uh, unique races, which is something you don't see very often. It's not even like uh, it's these players' mains. So, uh, yeah, let's see how it goes. This is going to be back from the Doyle Cup uh, 2v2, I guess, format. Uh, this will be off of not groups, um, but the losers of the groups stages uh, basically get put, put into a round robin pool, and I believe the top four uh, gets a second chance in the playoffs against the top four of the groups. So, uh, yeah, this is going to be one of them. It's only a best of one, so we'll only have one game. But, yeah, we are here on Tidewater Glades, I think. That's what it's called. That is what it is indeed called. Uh, Yumiko is spawning in as the Red Orc player in the bottom left. His ally is going to be uh, WFZ, who will be playing as the human this time around. Yumiko playing off-race Orc. I Meanwhile, WFZ playing off-race human, which is a bit weird. Yumiko is normally the human player, but... Uh, not sure if we actually rolled random on this one, but... Uh, anyway... Their opponents are going to be the blue team. Uh, Michael is going to be spawning in as the uh, blue undead in the top right. And Remind, his ally, is going to be spawning in as the blue knight elf in the top right as well. Uh, the blue team playing their main races. So, yeah, it's just the red team that is uh, playing a bit different. Although I'm pretty sure... I know one of the teams was just playing double random anyway, it could have been Yumiko and uh, WFZ, but either way, um, they should be skilled enough to play um, other races anyway, and it's 2v2, so the whole dynamic is somewhat shifted, although we are going to be having some standard starts here for both sides, Archmage first for uh, WFZ, meanwhile Yumiko going for the Farseer start here. Uh, oh. Lots of lag, mainly because of the new heroes just popping out here. Uh, as the blue team gets himself the Demon Hunter first, as well as the Death Knight first. Death Knight's going to be a bit lagging behind, as we did have a, I believe, a graveyard start here. So, um, going to be sacrificing a little bit on that Altar of Darkness timing, but we are going to be pumping out those Crypt Fiends a lot earlier. Already having one out on the field as the Merc camp is going to get taken out here on the blue side as well as the red side. Um, both teams having very strong early creeping capabilities with the human with their militia creeping as well as the uh, night elf with their ancient of war creeping. Level 2 already on the demon hunter picking up the plus 5 claws of attack. Oh, no, actually plus 9 claws of attack as the Merc Camp did drop the mid-tier uh, item there. Very nice, very nice. Uh, Farseer gonna be doing some scouting. Uh, he is gonna get mana burned basically to depletion thanks to that uh, Demon Hunter. So, I mean he did summon a couple of wolves beforehand, but he will be able to get some scouting down. Tier 2 already being spotted here on the side of Remind, not much else in his base to report, really. Um, yeah, wolves probably won't be able to do too much. Wisps can always just juggle themselves out of that uh, gold mine, and if needed to, they can just detonate on top of these wolves anyway. Uh, Archmage already going to be hitting that level 3 after taking out this dire wolf camp here. Uh, troll headhunters on the side of the orc player. Meanwhile, WC just sticking to those footmen for now. Going for that early tier 2 as well as I believe. I believe every player is going for early tier 2 here. 
it seems like Remind probably was the first, but not by much. Never mind, it's actually Yumiko who um, went tier 2. Uh, the first out of the four. As it looks like the Farseer will be underpowered a little bit, uh, as the Archmage is just powering leveling, power leveling here. Uh, might be able to shift some XP with the Farseer, but probably not enough for that level 2. Death Knight with level 2 with the Unholy Aura there. Obviously Aura is just so so good in multiplayer games since you do have basically double the units to affect that Aura with. As uh, both heroes are just sharing XP evenly here. Goblin Shop is going to get cleared out. We should be seeing maybe uh, Boots as well as TP Staff being picked up. So far it's just a TP Staff. As, uh, forces are under attack. Yeah, no boots this time around. Unholy Aura is probably going to be enough of that movement speed. As, yeah, both players are still just power farming it out. We do have the Lifesteal Aura being picked up here for the Archmage transferring over to the Farseer. As the Orc units would probably get more range un uh, more melee units. But we do have, I mean, we are mainly focusing on those uh, Troll Headhunters so, so far. Unless Yumiko wants to transition later on into uh, Raiders and Torrents maybe, who knows. Uh, Torrent Chieftain coming out as the second hero as well for Yumiko as he's going blazing to tier 3 right now. Uh, Paladin coming out as the second hero here for WF Sid, makes sense. Um, Holy Light being able to heal your teammates units is also very nice as well. Bit of a downside for the undead. Uh, on the team who has the undead, because uh, unholy, uh, not unholy, uh, death, death coil is basically only used as a DPS tool or just to heal your own units. Can't really heal your allies since they are uh, not undead. Lots of grip fiends already on the field here, plus one attack upgrade, uh, and we are just gonna go straight into tier 3 as well. Lich coming out as the second hero for. The undead side. Um, third hero could be very flexible for the undead. Uh, both uh, the Crypt Lords are very nice with the uh, Impales crowd control ability. Not sure if the Dread Lords going to be super useful later uh, in the late game, uh, but uh, they could also pick up the Tavern heroes. Of course, Dark Ranger always a very nice choice with Silence ability. As uh, Remind's going to go for a Pit Lord second, so. That's a bit a odd. I mean, Night Offs do tend to take Tavern Heroes uh, second anyway, but I, the Priestess of the Moon could have been a very nice option as well with all these ranged uh, units here on both of these uh, blue players. Uh, True Shot Aura would have had so much increased value, um, but we could also have like a Panda or Tinkerer maybe, but uh, no, we're gonna go for a Pit Lord for that Howl of Terror most likely, and uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. I guess uh, Howl of Terror is a lot more consistent than just relying on the chance of the Drunken Haze, but uh, the True Shot Aura also would have been um, probably an equally good option as well. Of course, having access to a True Sight Owl is just to uh, act as scouting in it, of course, uh, being able to spot invisible units, which uh, could come into play, um, no guarantee, but it could be a possibility here, as uh, we do have a couple of Arcane Sanctums being built for WFZ, but Spellbreakers are being added to the front line for now, as well as those Priests in the back. Uh, Archmage, or level, already level 4. Farseer level 3, meanwhile, uh, the undead, undead side, level 3, level 2 on the Death Knight and Lich. Tier, uh, tier 3 is now done, and we do have the Crypt Lord coming out here as the final hero for uh, for Michael. Meanwhile, Remind, still at level 3, level 2 on his heroes. I'm not sure if he went to A tier 3 as well. Uh, it does look like he did, but that is probably mainly for the uh, bear form on those bears. There we go, Master's Training is now underway. And the Hunter Soul is now upgrading that, or researching that Wellspring upgrade. So, uh, yeah, both sides just 
really rushing that tier 3. It seems like WC is going to be sticking to tier 2 for now. But uh, we could see tier 3 later on, probably just for the addition of probably some mortar teams if he needs it. Really I don't think the knights right are really required right now because uh, just dealing with those bears, I'm pretty sure spellbreakers are going to be somewhat decent against that uh, sort of frontline. I mean, there's a lot of backline threat here from the blue side. Dryads with uh, Dryads as well as Crypt Fiends is just kind of devastating, which is why I was kind of disappointed not seeing that Priestess come out. Uh, but since we are tier 3, there is still that possibility of it happening. Uh, Mark of the Claw is being researched for those uh, bears to get that roar available on that bear form. A player's forces are under attack. But uh, yeah, you gotta be careful because that is mainly uh, one of the reasons why Spellbreakers were chosen as the front line here for the human side. And here we go with the potential fight. Roar is going to be cast as well as Berserk being used by those uh, troll Berserkers there. Nice and pale. Hitting a uh, good front line or a good middle bit of the red side here. Um, not really sure which army does have the concave, but a blizzard is going to be pretty devastating on uh, those Crypt Beam bunches. Nice wall stomp coming in from the Torrent Chieftain here, but uh, the red side's not looking too hot. I mean, yes, they did take quite a bit of a beating with those illusions, but uh, I think the blue side uh, backline DPS is a bit more. Uh, it's looking kind of hard to tell. Um, more Berserk. I mean, Berserker is not being touched is a bit of a problem for the blue side. But, uh, uh, no. Actually, maybe the blue side will be forced to retreat as the constant the healing with the Paladin as well as the Priests is probably a bit too much to out-sustain for the blue side here. I don't think uh, Michael or Remind took that much of a beating in terms of casualties uh, compared to the red side, but uh, they just pulled out uh, before they could actually suffer major casualties, I would say. Statues are very much needed here. I don't think two statues are going to be enough, since the mana burning of those is pretty intense. But yeah, Yumiko, um... Yumiko and WFZ. Uh, I mean, there are a lot of troll berserkers here. Uh, only plus one, but with the Kota Beast attack boost. Uh... It is nice, but maybe I would like to see a lot more spellbreakers. Uh, actually, never mind. We already have six on the field. Uh, huh. It is a bit weird since they were fighting in this narrow corridor. Uh, it was hard to get for one of those armies to get a nice uh, surround on each other. But yeah, lots of level three heroes here on the side of the blue players. Meanwhile, we do have sort of the aura advantage on the red side. Devotion, Brilliance, uh, the War Drums, as well as the Endurance Aura, versus just uh, Unholy Aura, it looks like. Uh, we did have the uh, Lifesteal Aura earlier, but since we don't actually have any true melee units, um, it's not really that useful. That was a very nice impale there from the Crypt Lord. Uh, but since he is level 1, he is susceptible to being bursted down. Um, Blizzard uh, units did get repositioned out of that, but it was a very nice attempt at forcing those guys to reposition anyway. Uh, Demon Hunter does go down at level 3 very early on in the fight. Torrent Chieftain is now the next target of being focus fired here, but the blue side is now channeling their TPs as... Uh, yikes, uh, losing the Demon Hunter early was a bit of a mistake. Uh, not sure if he had a... T, uh, invuln or not, but that was a bit unfortunate for Remind. Uh, it does not look like he had an invuln available, so that was, yeah, a bit sloppy on the blue side there. Uh, losing that here early on meant that they were pretty much forced to TP out, uh, which is a bit of a head scratcher since it was the blue side that was kind of forcing the issue being on their half. Uh, but I think they were just trying to maybe take it down 
couple of expansions. Uh, regardless, the red side's been on their expansions for a long time. Meanwhile, blue side's only just established their expansion, at least for uh, Remind here. Michael, uh, I mean, uh, Michael here. Remind uh, has been mining a bit earlier on, but uh, yeah, the skull mine has just started being haunted. Might even be forced to get cancelled here because of this wolf, but uh, now that the reinforcements are here, gold mine is going to be uh, completed. I say that as the red team is now moving out. Um, oof, that red death ball is looking pretty menacing right now. Plus one, plus two on those spellbreakers, so they're pretty decently upgraded as well as pretty decently tanky. Um, Tier 3 is probably needed to get that inner fire. I think inner fire would be super duper helpful on the red side, especially since their blue side doesn't really have much to deal with enemy buffs, which is kind of why Remind has to be super careful with his roar usage as well. And we don't have nearly enough destroyers in the air to basically benefit off of the amount of buffs that the red side can just steal and put on themselves anyway. Uh, here comes the Siege on Three Mines main expansion here. It is gonna go down super quick despite no siege damage whatsoever, but the red side is gonna be forced to uh, TP back because uh, yeah, even though they did take down the expansion, their positioning wasn't so great. The frontline uni units were basically on this side, meanwhile the uh, backline units were super exposed to uh, the counterattack remind triple mountain giants on the field that is a beefy front line if I've ever seen one um, I'm not sure if it's going to be enough though uh, they will clap those spellbreakers pretty hard but um, a player's force is our under yeah under that those that's a lot of trolls that is almost two control groups worth of trolls uh, a bit sad to not see any Shaman being added to the mix here, or even Troll Witch Doctors. I think healing wards would be super useful right now, but uh, right now we do have the Shaman upgrades on the way. We just have a fight ongoing right now. Uh, Spellbreakers, trying to steal as much uh, Roars as possible. You can see here that the Trolls just benefiting a lot from this buff. Uh, roar. War, war drums as well as berserk as well as plus three attack upgrades they are doing so much damage right now howl of terror unfortunately the pit lord's not getting a great position to go for that debuff as blizzard is going to once again force a repositioning there death core going to heal up the crypt lord despite just so many good uh impales coming down uh yeah having like basically half of the army comp being spellbreakers who are Basically immune to that impale is uh, not very nice. Torrent Chieftain, gonna get uh, overextended a little bit, but he did get traded for that Crypt Lord, so I guess it's only fair. Uh, one Mountain Giant does go down, I believe two Mountain Giants actually went down instead. So uh, yeah, despite the front line being super beefy, uh, the back line is just so threatening for the red side here that it's getting tough. It's getting real tough right now. Pit Lord, uh, he did get revived through the tavern, I believe, but I oh, know uh, he didn't actually. Uh, it was the Crypt Lord that actually fell earlier on. Pit Lord just not getting a good position onto the backline here for that Hall of Terror. Uh, Turret Chief is going to get revived through the tavern once again, but he's going to get Nova Coil down to half HP. But still, the red side is once again on the chase. Uh, yeah, that is going to be game. Wow. Um, that didn't end up being so great for the blue side. Uh, Spellbreakers were just kind of annoying to deal with as a Night Elf player because Roar is just so useful for your side, but getting it not only taken away from you, but given on to the other opposing, opposing units, that's kind of nasty. And uh, plus three attack on those trolls is Nothing to be scoffed at. Um, would have liked to see the ultimate Chad troll with the bloodlust, but um, that was almost good enough. Hope you guys enjoyed this one, and I'll see you guys again next time. Take care.